Knock at your door and I'm serving like pizza I got the ice, Italian pizza Bitch, I'm a family man like a pig These niggas be short stops, they're a GT Knock a nigga out like I'm Vegeta Yo, what's good? YouTube's a boy, Ron, back with another YouTube video for y'all today, man. Listen, man, listen, man, listen, man, listen, man, listen, man, listen, man, look. Look, look, look. I'm back with another reaction video for y'all, man. And this one is titled, The Three Kingdoms by Oversimplified. Now, this is something I haven't uh, seen, you know what I'm saying? And I already watched the Napoleon Jones, the Napoleon, Napo the Napoleonic Wars, Napoleonic Wars, and World War One and World War II, and all the rest of them right here. I'm right there. I'm saying, all right, that's a playlist oversimplified, and this is in there. This is included as well. So make sure y'all get those a look, you know what I'm saying? And go subscribe to your boy. But look, speaking of subscriptions, make sure y'all hit that bell when y'all subscribe, you know what I'm saying? You know if I want to post something, you know what I'm saying? And also, follow my IG, Snapchat, the intro, and outro. Follow my IG down below in the description. Is there alone with this original video, you know what I'm saying? So go show oversimplified some love. But look, I need more, I need more, I need more. You already know I'm rocking. I'm on the road to 10K. Yeah, hey, man. Also, I'm getting tough you on the gaming. You know what I'm saying? I got a Twitch. So it's in the description as well with everything else. So make sure y'all follow my Twitch. So I get notified when I'm streaming. So we can get Duffy. But hey, look. With that being said, man, let's hop to this video. Shout. Put in the basket. Let's get it. This video was made possible by Total War Three Kingdoms. The brand new strategy game from the multi-award winning Total War series. Support my channel by using the link in the description down below to buy the game on Steam. Also, new merch available now in the store, including a mystery new character. George game. Washington. I wonder who it could be. Ancient China. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. The children are playing in the village square. What a wonderful time to be alive. Hey, the Yellow River flooded again and destroyed all your crops. What? Hey, that's and terrible. And also we're being raided by nomadic tribesmen. And also, this period of Chinese history may be entirely mythical, meaning you may not even exist. Well, that would certainly explain the laser eyes. What the freak is going on? Chinese civilization began around the year 2000 BC, when the possibly mythical Xia dynasty was formed. Throughout China's history, dynasties would usually rise up with a powerful leader who worked for the good of the people. But over time, the leaders would become more corrupt and self-serving. Someone would inevitably build a lake of alcohol, and the angry populace would overthrow them, giving way for a new dynasty to rise. Lake Following of this alcohol. pattern, the Xia dynasty was replaced by the Shang, who liked bronze and writing. But then the leaders got corrupt, and were replaced by the Zhou, who liked the iron and philosophy. But that one sort of just fell apart, Confused. and was replaced by the Qin, who liked building walls and people made out of rock but they were pretty tyrannical from the start and were quickly replaced by the Han who liked creating new trade routes and getting in touch with their emotions in line with this pattern the Han dynasty came about under the strong and popular leadership of Emperor Gao Zhu the dynasty remained firmly in place for over four centuries and was considered a golden age in Chinese history developing new forms of art political thinking Technology. Oh, looks like all the leaders got corrupt. What the See, what? Probably the biggest problem in ancient China's political system that allowed so much corruption to come about all the time was a little something called court culture. Let me explain. Imagine for me, if you will, that you are the son of the Chinese emperor. Hooray! Now, apart from how weird it is that you have a ton of stepmoms and many of them would like to kill you, and also Whoa. all of your friends are middle-aged dudes with no dongs, life's pretty alright. What? One day, your father says, Son, I know our relationship hasn't been the best, and I've never said this before. But I just want to let you know that I love you. Oh no, I'm having a heart attack. He suddenly dies. Look at you. Now you're the emperor. I'm so proud of you. But wait, you are but a child and have no idea how to rule over a massive empire. Exactly. Fret not, because just about everyone in your court wants to help you out with that. Or but take hey, over. Man, remember me? I'm your mom's bro. Anyway, I heard you needed someone to rule over China for you. I mean, to help you rule China. So hey. Here's a popsicle. I hope we can get along. No way, man. We've been your friends and your personal caretakers your whole life. And even though we may have no dongs, I think you should give us all the power to rule China. I mean, help you rule China. Exactly. So who will you be influenced by? Your scheming uncle or your loyal eunuchs? And toward... Exactly. Because nobody... When that happens, you're already a conflicted child. You know what I'm saying? Your father dies suddenly. And you have a whole bunch of stepmoms that hate you and want to kill you because you're not their child. And freaking... You have no friends. The only friends you have are people that are, uh, uh, like, what, what do you say? The caretakers? And as soon as your father dies, of course, everybody's going to come out. Everybody's going to pop up and be like, oh, yeah, it's not going to be. You're, this kid not going to rule China. It's going to be me. You know what I'm saying? And that's when nobody wants a kid to rule. This is asking for a disaster. So, hey, man. If I was to choose, the, the uncle looks evil. He looks evil as a mug. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't choose him. 
I would choose the, the leader out of that group of uh, caretakers. You know what I'm saying? Who would you choose? Let me know down below in the comments. Towards the end of the Han Dynasty, a string of child emperors allowed more and more power to fall into the hands of the eunuchs. Oh no, now they're scheming too. They began handing out government jobs for bribes, heavily taxing the poor for their own wealth. Oh, wow. And while you're sitting there eating your popsicle, everyone in your court is literally murdering each other to try and consolidate more power and riches for themselves. While all the peasants are outside like, hey, did you guys know there's been a drought out here for two years? Guys? Obviously, the people weren't too happy that while they were struggling to survive, they were also being heavily taxed so that the eunuch faction could all have rockin' mansions, complete with swimming pools and Alexas. So finally, when a self-proclaimed Taoist wizard came along and was like, you know whose fault it is that we're all out here starving? It's the emperor and his posse. They've lost their mandate from heaven, and the imperial family must be destroyed with an unrelenting, furious wrath. Also, check this out. Huh? Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> Ta-da! It's a little kitty cat. Look at her little ears. The people loved his political <laughs> philosophy. He promised them land reforms, and his followers grew in number. They began arming themselves and wearing yellow turbans. And they also developed a really catchy slogan. In the year 184, the Yellow Turban Rebellion broke out across China, with millions rising up against the Han Dynasty, and the imperial government in the capital city freaked out. With all their internal bickering, they were completely unprepared and unable to deal with such a huge rebellion. So they were forced to call on independent warlords from across the empire to help them deal with this situation. Some big names took part in the fighting. I'm talking the likes of the great Cao Cao, the Never tyrannical Dong Zhou, Never Liu Bei, Sun Jian, and many, many other Chinese names I am definitely not pronouncing correctly. These warlords yeah, never heard of any of the them. rebellion in their own respective regions, mm -hmm. and with casualties in the millions, Whoa. the Han Dynasty breathed a huge sigh of relief. Good but Lord. what they didn't realize is that by relying on all the warlords and their armies, they had essentially diminished their own central control over the empire, and many of the warlords now held the power to act almost completely independently and rule over their own local regions themselves. Back in the capital, the emperor and his son were having a little chat. Listen, I know we've had our ups and downs, and I spend all of my time with your many, many smoking hot stepmoms instead of you. Mm -hmm. Well, what say you and I finally go on a little fishing trip together this weekend? Oh no, I'm having a stroke! Bruh! And yet you? another Bruh. child emperor was on the throne. This time, however, instead of the eunuch faction gaining even more power, this child emperor's uncle became his regent, who also just so happened to be the head of the imperial army, Hu Jin. Man, I hate those sneaky, lying, cheating eunuchs. Hey, warlord Yuan Xiao. What should we do? Kill them all. Great idea. Right on. You can't kill the eunuchs. They're a vital part of this empire's governance. And also, they paid me a lot of money to say that about them. Ah, oh, come on. No. So Hu Jin and Yuan Shao decided the empress may need more convincing. And so they called in an infamous, feared, tyrannical, overweight warlord from the northwest to help convince her. That man was Dong Zhou. And he set out for the capital city with his army. Hey guys, I heard a rumor that Hu Jin was planning on killing us. Then why don't we kill him first? And so it was. They lured him to the palace with a forged letter from his sister, and when he got there, they lobbed off his head. What? Hey, bro, it was that simple? Kill them all. Imperial forces stormed the palace, <laughs> and the eunuchs were all massacred. Why is it dude spanking them? Who were still suffering from drought and starvation, saw what was going on, and began to riot. The emperor and his brother were forced to flee the city, which was now in flames. And the feared, nasty, tyrannical, bloated Dong Zhou had just arrived. He found the emperor and his brother wandering the hills outside of the city and was understandably confused. So he scooped up the emperor, went to the capital and was like, Hey guys, what's up? I see the capital is on fire. Also, I'm here with my army and I have the emperor with me. Wait a minute. The capital is on fire. I'm here with my army and I have the emperor. Screw you guys. I'm in charge. So now Dong Zhou ruled over the Han Dynasty as the emperor's regent. His first act was to say to the emperor, Hey man, no hard feelings, but I like your little brother better. So I'm actually making him emperor instead of you. So you're free to go do whatever you want. Actually. Yeah. Whoa. Dong Zhou ruled with an iron fist. What? He did whatever the flip he wanted. He made absolute decisions himself, showing no regard for the monarchy. He had his opponents or those who disagreed with him killed. He broke protocol, doing things like keeping his sword when approaching the emperor, wearing shoes in the court, sleeping in the emperor's bed, and worst of all, he would walk in the presence of the emperor. You were meant to trot. 
The other warlords around the Empire hated him, and so they said, something needs to be done about this guy. Let's kill him. Let's say we form a coalition and oust him. And it was agreed. Warlords from across China, their armies amounting to 100,000 men, allied together against the tyranny of Dong Zhou. Yuan Shao's coalition consisted of some of the nation's most capable leaders, including his half-brother Yuan Shu, the great Cao Cao, and Sun Jian. But Dong Zhou had an ace up his sleeve, his protege, an adopted son, one of the most skilled and feared warriors in all of China. It's Lu Bu. This guy Lu Bu? was a beast of a man. He never lost a duel, and no other warlord dared Let me challenge him to one. He was also famous for betraying just about every warlord he ever fought for, something that Dong Zhou didn't seem too concerned about. The coalition attacked Dong Zhou in Luoyang, and in particular, Sun Jian's forces inflicted a heavy defeat against him, and he was forced to flee to the city of Chang'an. After this initial success, however, the war entered into a stalemate. The warlords in the coalition realized it was going nowhere, and also they all secretly hated each other. So they all went home. Dong Zhou was safe. Until. Legend has it that a government official in Chang'an had a daughter who was hot. Super hot. He invited Lu Bu to his home, and promised Lu Bu that someday he could marry his daughter. Then, he invited Dong Zhou to his house and did the exact same thing. Dong Zhou was so smitten that he insisted on taking her as his concubine immediately. And when Lu Bu heard the news, he was pretty unhappy. Hey man, aren't you worried that you stole Lu Bu's girl and betrayal is like, his personal hobby? Lu Bu? Betray me? No way man, never gonna happen. Yup. Yup. Oh, crap. Lu Bu, along with other government officials, assassinated the tyrannical Dong Zhou. Then they left his body burning in the streets. Some sources say he was so fat and oily, he kept on burning for days. Nice. So with Dong Zhou dead, and the power of the Han government essentially decimated, China was left with a huge power gap, and a ton of warlords who all slept soundly at night dreaming of being the one to fill it. Here we enter into a crazy and chaotic period of civil war all across China, with so many people, so much betrayal, so much intricacy, and like the Game of Thrones look like a Dr. Seuss publication. <laughs> but just to give you an idea of how crazy and chaotic it was, see if you're able to keep up with this. Are you ready? Here we go. Here is a rough map of the warlords throughout the Han Dynasty at the time. Half-brothers Yuan Shao and Yuan Shu were both in a power struggle for who would become the figurehead of their family. Yuan Shu made alliances with warlords in the north, along with Sun Jian, the guy who defeated Dong Zhou. Yuan Shao also made alliances with Liu Biao in the south and Cao Cao, who was an amazing strategist and general. All of these warlords began fighting each other. Cao Cao began building his own strength by subjugating nearby remnants of the Yellow Turban Rebellion into his own forces. Down south, things weren't going so well for Sun Jian, as he was killed in an ambush. Wow. So Sun 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 Se took over. Then, Yuan Shu got pushed back to the river Huai, so he ordered Sun Se to take the territory of warlord Liu Kang. Then Sun Se went off to capture territories in the east for himself. Cao Cao's family lived in this province over here. One day, they were murdered. Oh no, Cao Cao held the province's governor responsible, and so he launched a cruel invasion in which he pillaged cities and murdered over a hundred thousand civilians. The governor sent out a call for help, and a very popular, likable warlord by the name of Liu Bei came the to long his ears, However, hey, while Cao Cao was away fighting, a rebellion was staged against him in his home province by none other than it's Lu Bu. Cao Cao rushed home and defeated Lu Bu, who fled to the east, which by now had been inherited by Liu Bei. Then Lu Bu, surprise, surprise, launched a rebellion against Liu Bei, who fled to Cao Cao. Together, Cao Cao and Liu Bei would go on to invade and defeat Lu Bu. Lu Bu offered to join Cao Cao, and Cao Cao considered the offer, but his advisors were like, no way man, this guy's betrayed literally everyone he ever worked for, and so Bu Hu, Lu was Bu, executed. was executed. Next, Cao Cao convinced the emperor to move in with him. Now he's in control of the Han government, something that made his allies very jealous. Yuan Shu, out of nowhere, decides to declare himself emperor of the new Zhang dynasty. Nobody liked the that. Freak? His allies cut ties with him. The imperial government ordered everyone to kill him. He tried to flee to his brother Yuan Shao, but died of illness on the way. Sun Se took over his territory, and then got assassinated. So his brother, Sun Chen, took over. Liu There's Bei a lot of people. Cao Cao, but got obliterated going very and fast. was forced to flee south. Yuan Shao finally defeated the warlord to his north, and could now focus south. He declared war on his allied Cao Cao, but was defeated at the Battle of Guangdu. Cao Cao has now united the north, and he turned his attention to the south. In particular, Liu Biao's province was becoming a powerful threat, so Cao Cao attacked him. Liu Bei was now fighting for Liu Biao, and he held Cao Cao off for a while. But then Liu Biao died, and his son took over, and immediately surrendered to Cao Cao. Liu Bei was horrified, and he fled southward to try and maintain control of the province. Cao Cao was on an absolute roll, and it looked like he would be the one to take control 
of China. He began making plans to attack both Liu Bei and Sun Qian. At the same the time? Them, seeing where things were headed, met up and decided to form an alliance. Now, Idiot. I know that was a lot to take in, but all you really need to know at this point is that this guy is on his way to taking over everything, and he's about to throw his full weight at the southern warlords. These two have one chance, one battle, to prevent him from invading the south, and that battle was the famous Battle of Red Cliffs. To take the south, Cao Cao would need to control and cross the mighty Yangtze River. He had over 200,000 men to face against Liu Bei and Sun Qian's combined force of 50,000. How would they stand a chance when they were so outnumbered? Legend says most of Sun Qian's advisors pleaded with him to surrender, but then he smashed up a table and they all backed down. Luckily, Cao Cao's forces were ravaged by disease and exhaustion, and his northern soldiers weren't too comfortable on ships. So when Cao Cao sailed down the river and the two sides met for an initial skirmish at Wu Lin, Cao Cao was unable to inflict a defeat against the allies. Then, one of Sun Qian's men came up with a very sneaky plan. He sent Cao Cao a letter, pretending that he and others wanted to defect to his side, and offered to to bring him some of Liu Bei and Sun Qian's finest ships. Little did Cao Cao know, however, that those ships were full of flammable reeds. As they approached his fleet, they were set alight and destroyed his ships and camp. Seeing the situation as hopeless, Cao Cao ordered a difficult retreat through the rain and marshlands, during which more of his men fell to illness and disease. The underdogs had won, and Cao Cao would never again have another chance to take the south. Following that, the three warlords took some time to finish off some smaller competitors in their own regions. And by the year 214, China looked a little bit like this. Okay. Cao Cao continued to try to penetrate the southern regions, but had no success, and even lost the Hanzhong region to Liu Bei in 217. The former allies eventually fell out over who should own this territory here, with Sun Qian coming out on top. In 220, Cao Cao died of a head disease and was replaced by his son, Cao Pi. Cao Pi convinced the Emperor of Han to abdicate and then proclaimed himself the Emperor of the new state of Wei. Liu Bei followed suit, declaring himself the true Emperor of Shu Han. And a few years later, Sun Qian joined in the fun and declared himself Emperor of Wu. And so now you have a number of kingdoms in China. How many? Count them. One, two, three. Three kingdoms. Except, actually, they weren't kingdoms, they were dynasties. And when the three kingdoms finally formed, not a whole lot happened. For the next three decades, they continued to engage in combat, but it almost always ended in stalemate, and nobody really got anywhere. So how did it all end? Did Cao Cao's descendants eventually realize his dream of unifying China? Not quite. Instead, the three kingdoms became victims of the usual problems that plagued Chinese dynasties. In Wu, Rebellion. Sun Qian's descendant became a tyrant, who was more interested in spending time with his concubines than governing. In Shu Han, a powerful, corrupt, eunuch faction rose up. And by now we all know how that ends. Mm -hmm. And in Wei, a string of young emperors gave way for a powerful family, the Sima clan, to take control of the dynasty's government. This Sima clan recognized the weak state Shu and Wu had been reduced to, and so they began making plans. I've just received this letter that says Wei is planning to attack us. Should we make preparations for war? Nah, it's probably nothing to worry about. Let's do absolutely nothing. Sounds good to me. Wei launched a full-scale invasion into Shu, which fell within a year. Then Sima Yan forced the Wei Emperor to abdicate, and proclaimed himself Emperor of the new Jin Dynasty. In the year 279, Jin launched an invasion of Wu, and finally unified China in the year 280. The pattern of rising yes, and sir. falling dynasties, division, and reunification would continue in China for centuries to come. Right now you may be asking yourself, but wait a minute, what would have happened if Cao Cao had his way in unified China? Or what if Lu Bu never assassinated Dong Zhou and he continued to rule over the Han Dynasty? What about if one of these smaller warlords had risen to the top? Dang it, what if I want to be a warlord during the downfall of the Han Dynasty? Whoa, partner, calm down, because now you can. This video was brought to you by Total War Three Kingdoms, a brand new strategy game that combines a gripping turn-based campaign of empire building, statecraft, and conquest with stunning real-time battles, it's the rest of the video promo. Of legendary warlords and conquer the yeah, it is. Unite China under. This is the end of the video, man. It's very informative. I never learned. I never heard of anything like this. You know what I'm saying? And it was a lot to take in, especially in the 17 minutes when it's when it seems like it should have been probably two parts. But hey, look, I'm not judging. It was still valuable information. I took it in as much in as I could. Hey, man, it's very interesting, man. Make sure y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. <sighs> Ding! Hit that bell for post notifications. You know, get notified when I post them. You know what I'm saying? Follow my IG, Snapchat, and the intro and outro. Follow my IG down below in the description. Is there along with this original video? You know what I'm saying? So go show, oversimplify some love. But look, man, look, man, look. I need more, any more, any more. You know what I'm saying? You already know how I'm rocking. I'm on the road to 10K. 
help me get there. Please help me. Help me, please. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. I'm also getting Duff here in the gaming. I got a Twitch down below in the description. I need, I'm going to need a tissue in a little bit. I'm a, I got a Twitch down below in the description. Go follow that jink. You know what I'm saying? And uh, get notified when I'm streaming so you can join in. Because I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving real Duff here on the sticks, man. They call me John 6. I'm a John Wicked Gaming. Wait, look. With all that being said, man, I am... Shh, <laughs>